Hi everybody and welcome to the second in a series of discussions on motorcycle helmet safety standards, particularly DOT, ECE, and the Snell 2015 standards. Uh, as in the first, I mentioned if you're watching this on YouTube, go to the description box below if you're interested. There's a link there that will take you to a file that has copies of each of those standards. Those are publicly available documents. You can review them. In addition to that, there's a spreadsheet that I've built through the years that shows uh, the different tests, whether or not they're required by each of the standards, and it gives the basic parameters of those tests. So you can see for yourself how they compare one to another. As I mentioned in the, at the end of the first video, they're all good standards. Anybody who argues that they're not, I would, I would disagree with. Um, they all do a very similar job in modern age. That hasn't always been the case, but as time goes along, they are getting more and more alike in what they require, the tests they require, the energies they expect you to, to handle, etc. So uh, today we're going to talk about energy. And if you start to, to uh, look for a, a magic answer as to what's the maximum g-force that the human head can withstand, you're going to really struggle because nobody has, you know, it's not the number. If you hit this number, that's it. And in fact, it's one of those variables. Uh, that is will drive people that develop safety products crazy because it's all over the map. We see NFL football players uh, routinely taking hits in excess of 100 G's. Now they're wearing pads and protective equipment, helmets, etc. But uh, they do that and they get up and they keep playing. Okay. Um, we there was a study done. A, a fighter, uh, Frank Bruno, I think was his name. He was a world heavyweight champion, and and they did a lab study on him, and he could generate. I, it was over 900 pounds of punch in the lab and they, they extrapolated and determined that in, in a boxing match that would be equivalent to about 1,400 pounds and that if he did a cross with that kind of uh, impact, it could accelerate his opponent's head to somewhere in the neighborhood of 57 Gs, okay? And um, so there's a number, 57 Gs. If you look up concussions, there's a lot of uh, indications that somewhere around 95 G's, you stand a good chance of ending up with a concussion. But like all these variables we're talking about, there have been cases where people get hit much harder than that, walk away unaffected, and others where they don't take a hit that that's hard, that is that hard, and they are concussed. So um, this is the craziness of it all. But if we say in that 100 G range, somewhere in there, it, it, things are getting very, very serious, then why would ECE have a 275 G maximum hit? Uh, Snell is 275, except for their two largest head forms. I discussed that in the first video because of the mass, the size and weight of those. Uh, it's a little bit lower for those two head forms, but everything below that's 275. DOT is 400. Well, there's a big difference between 100 range and 275 or 400. Uh, so why? Well, it really comes down to this. If they build the helmet too soft or too fragile, it won't be there to do the job, which is to mitigate energy and reduce the actual impu impact that your head has to deal with, which transfers to your brain having to deal with it. Uh, if, if it's too low, the helmet would have a catastrophic failure. It would fall apart before it could do its job. And simply put, that's the reason that these, these ratings are set so high. Uh, they have dropped through the years, and I think that we may see them continue to come down, but we're under the limitations of current technology, current uh, materials, and we are seeing improvements in all of those, and you never know what, what the next greatest uh, discovery might be, but you can bet that we're going to be looking for it. So I hope you found this information useful, and uh, stay tuned. I plan to do another one or two or more of these. Uh, I invite your comments as always. I do want you to understand nothing I say is intended as advice. This is simply my opinion based on the years that I've been in and around labs and developing motorcycle helmets, uh, safety helmets. So again, thanks for your time and we'll see you again soon.